The last leg of winter. Nothing but oats and honey till spring. Doomed to forget the taste of meat forever. Unless... Don't even think about it. Wouldn't dream of it. We should split it. Good idea. Who splits it? First one to a knife. I love you. I know. A competition then. Axe throwing. You'd win that. Regilding the timbers! You're the town gilder. It was worth a shot. What if we resalted the leg, put it out to freeze, and only when we absolutely needed it? Shaved it into tiny pieces that we sprinkled over breakfast once a week. Exactly. Oats or honey? Oats. Oats it is. Hey, what's going on everybody? Matt with Gear Focus, and I'm really excited to have Kristen and Julian Curry on the show today. We are doing a live premiere. They were the winners of the short film contest. Their short film was called The Last Leg, and it was extremely clever. And we're gonna be talking about mm -hmm. some DIY filmmaking techniques which Julian is the master of, and Kristen <laughs> as well. <Yes. laughs> so without further ado, we have Julian and Kristen. How you doing, guys? Hi. Doing great. Thank you so much for having us. Excited to be here. Definitely. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure to have you on the Gear Focus channel, and congrats again on winning the short thank film you. contest. Was that thank like three you, months ago, you. I think now, right? Somewhere around there. <laughs> I don't even know what month it currently is. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Isn't Everything's that the blur. way it is? It, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It was that's the way in it the spring. Right it was, when was it? April? May? Yeah, Somewhere I think in there. April. April, May. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we picked the winner in May. So, you guys were the winners. Congrats again. And uh, we're going to talk today, and you're going to share with our community and our audience some tips and advice for filmmakers on DIY approach to filmmaking, including mm -hmm. making your own props, correct? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So now you, when we were talking before the other day, a week ago or whatever, you said you had a uh, fine arts major uh, and that's really where the DIY props and everything came from, is that correct? Well, um, my major was actually in um, theater directing um, oh, okay. I, but before that, just as a hobby, um, I was a fine artist, um, just always enjoyed drawing in a kind of comic book style. And it, it was just a hobby until, uh, until in my theater degree, I could see how those skills or techniques, or at least that part of my brain could be applied to bigger storytelling. Um, so in making props or costumes or designing sets and lighting and stuff. So um, I wouldn't say I have any formal training as a fine artist, <laughs> but um, I'm an aggressive hobbyist. <laughs> yeah, I don't know true. what- I can agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what formal training would even consist of in fine arts. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's such a organic type of process the mm -hmm. sure you really just you're either doing it and learning or not so yep. exactly um well let's talk about the last leg for a second speaking of props sure because one of the things that all the judges you know were trying to figure out when we watched it when we were judging it was how did they do the house shot <laughs> and i'm gonna th i'm gonna yep. throw up the house shot right now so that everybody can take a look at that if they haven't seen it already. And then I'll let you guys explain how you did that. So let's roll that. Here it is, the last leg of winter. All right, so that was awesome. <laughs> um, how did you guys pull that off? Oh man. Um... Well, I thought that I was going to have to pull some kind of a, a stock clip for a snowy outdoor cabin scene. Um, and I wasn't really finding anything that uh, looked 
old world enough. Like there were some ski cabins in Switzerland that were inundated in snow and I don't know, nothing was doing it for me. Um, and I love models and I love miniatures. Um, my aesthetic and my film passion is definitely more rooted in the practical side of things. Mm -hmm. um, just as we grew up, even if things looked really fake, um, we right. just love it. Uh, that's, we prefer the tangible yeah. set rather than the like the CG set. And that's just totally personal preference. Yeah. I think being 90s babies, we were on the cusp of like as technology was growing where a lot of it was still practical, but it still had that magic to it, you know? So I think we still try to like hold on to that as much as possible. Yeah. And um, so I thought, well, what if what if we built a miniature? Um, mm -hmm. And I've never done that before. Uh, so I gave myself the sort of security backdoor of, well, if it sucks, I'm gonna just put a lot of layers of snow in front of it and no one will be able to tell. Um, <laughs> which, I mean, there, there, there are still a couple of digital layers of snow on top of it, but I ended up being way more uh, proud of it than I thought I was going to be um, mm -hmm. and put more detail into it. Um, yeah, it was just the base is made out of cardboard and um, just some old, boxes i keep all amazon. the boxes that yeah <laughs> amazon or like other gear boxes that come in like fun little sizes so just hot glued a bunch of those together um you want to grab it yeah i got it right here can you kind of describe it better it's still covered in powdered sugar so i have to be <laughs> so rather it's delicious. careful with awesome. it. wow there it is smells <laughs> smells like a dessert um so yeah, cardboard no, and then what do we got oh. focus there got it. Oh. That's awesome. That is. Yep. that is so cool. So, yeah, as you can see, the inside is just cardboard. Um, <laughs> and then show the back. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like some layered <laughs> stuff. And uh, nice. I don't know. It just had to kind of establish a more time period appropriate cabin. Um, this is just some faux fur that I had some scraps lying around. And these are just a bunch of twigs, like hot glue to the side. Um, these are uh, <laughs> rivets kind of and washers. Um, that were just glued to kind of look like Viking shields yep. and popsicle sticks for the uh, top. So it was pretty low. Well, it was zero cost, um, but it wasn't a ton of work to get something that um, I ended up featuring a little more than I thought I was going to. Sorry, I'm spilling <laughs> a lot of sugar. It's all powdered sugar in here. It's all right. And it's <laughs> edible. So there you yeah. go. <laughs> it's eco-friendly. It's great. There you go. Um, but anyways, uh, like when I was first looking at the footage, I'm like, ah, it just looks like a toy house. Like what mm. I, I don't, I never want the effect to distract from the narrative, even though we love that kind of aesthetic. So, um, and I, it took a while for me to just accept like, all right, I'm not going to inundate it in snow. It's a, it's a model. And I think I kind of want people to know that it's a, model and that it's gonna look well but we did sort of like i mean toy. all the judges, i know and that's what's so surprising yeah <laughs> I, we didn't every judge was like oh that's got to be a model maybe it's not maybe that's a clip maybe that's a where they live house. oh my like, gosh like they we just couldn't figure it out and, that, and that's what you did such a phenomenal job at and i think Thank that's you. what you know something that you can really share with our audience for you know upcoming filmmakers, established filmmakers, people are trying to learn, they're on a tight budget, especially now during the times we're going through, um, mm -hmm. is, well, first of all, I wanna say that like that shot, you know, in filmmaking, you have your establishing shot, um, and that fit, you just did it, you just knocked it out of the park with that because it really felt you guys were inside. Oh, good, that <laughs> thank <house>. you. <laughs> Right? Like awesome. it just was such a smooth transition. So I know that you guys used some techniques we had talked about before. I mean, you uh, some set, you know, a set in the barn that yeah. you guys had set up. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about some of the approaches and challenges and how you guys overcome those. And not just this film, any film, right? Sure. Um, well, I think one of the biggest uh, tips going into DIY filmmaking is assessing what you already have um, mm -hmm. and taking a very creative look at everything you have. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's very common for people to think of a think of a story first and then have to buy their way to telling that story. Right. And um, while you will always have to do that on some level or another, 
uh, we definitely try and pride ourselves on building off of what we already have and thinking within those parameters and not seeing them as obstacles but seeing them as like what's what's the toy box mm -hmm. and what's the story that can be told within that toy box mm -hmm. um toy is kind of an understatement <laughs> because in the garage <laughs> there's a a viking hall set from another <laughs> short film that we just decided to leave up so in the time of quarantine uh and this was like pretty early quarantine mm -hmm. when uh yeah just lockdowns were way more uh strict um mm -hmm. We didn't even want to be filming anything outdoors, right? So, uh, like, well, I I want to I want to tell a story that kind of reflects what we're going through, and um, without being on the nose or without being uh, negative, mm -hmm. um, like, how do we bring some light and levity to mm -hmm. a uh, a complicated situation? And I don't know, just grocery shopping took on a whole new dynamic for us the food that we were making here at the house took on a whole different dynamic so um uh, one sec so uh thought well what if we told a story about like about the last part that last piece of delicious food that you have before <laughs> you break into all the canned goods that you stocked up on right because we, no one knew how much how much time was gonna uh transpire in this quarantine so yeah. I'm not gonna make it about toilet paper, so. Um, <laughs> but that a dynamic was happening. I'm like, oh well, do we do we make like the really good chicken that we have in the freezer, or yeah. should we should we hold on to that for an emergency and only eat like our pasta and rice and all that yeah. stuff? It was like, do you eat the frozen pizza or do you eat the oatmeal? And we're like, yeah. well, <laughs> so it's right. kind of a fun play on. All right, if you're down to the last fun meal that you had for the foreseeable future. What's that going to look like? Two people stuck in a house um, and a cat. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we'll again, just kind of taking stock of what was around and writing a story from that. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, maybe what we'll do, and maybe it's a good idea, maybe what we'll do is I know that you shot you know, some talking head about the approach sure, and, the, yeah. and, the, and the background of that. Maybe what we'll do is we'll post that video separately Great. and if you guys sure. want to check out the behind the scenes of the last leg you can uh watch the video that is on our guest host channel and uh you know where julian talks about their approach their challenges and, and a lot more of the specifics of that and that way right now we can stay a little bit more broad uh sure. in the sure. diy process Let's take DIY filmmaking and let's kind of go back to when you started mm -hmm. with your filmmaking. And why don't you talk about some of the biggest fails or challenges or learning experiences. Mm -hmm. Because our fails, we learn the most from our fails. We don't learn oh, yeah. from our successes. We learn from our failures. Absolutely. So talk about some of that and how you overcame that and how, what you learned from that, because I think that's gonna really help our audience that, uh, of filmmakers that are, are looking for some DIY and getting started advice. Is that your cat? Sorry, our cat just freaked out. Oh my yeah. gosh, there's the I... famous cat. <laughs> Actually, that's a separate cat. That's a second cat. Whoops. <laughs> well, that's the second cat. We got a few. Oh, okay, that's not the famous uh, cat. Well, throw no, him, he'll, throw that I'm sure he'll make an side. appearance. We don't want that. I'm sure the famous cat will show up. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Well, no. So going back to the beginning, I I started out a lot of a lot like most aspiring filmmakers do, which is with um, an issue that I like to call pro syndrome, where you are obsessed with your product being pro rather than it being good, um, and all your creative energy and all your just all your energy goes into how pro can I make this? Mm -hmm. And um, I started out that way. And I thought, well, you know, I, I've always got to have a crew person who can do this, who can do this, and I'm gonna have to hire all these different people. Where do I get the money? Who do I ask it from? Do they make a return? And do that's, crowdfunding. Yeah, there's, do. that's all well and good and that works. But uh, I was just really hitting a lot of roadblocks. And um, now in hindsight, realizing that those projects weren't uh, weren't as strong as they could be uh, because a lot of my energies were spent on um, on fueling the pro syndrome. Right. And when you have that, you make so many excuses not to um, 
not to do the project or to delay mm -hmm. it because you don't have the money, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have the right gear, you don't have the right software or the right connections. Connections is the big thing in LA. Like, well, right. you know, who's going to be in it or this or that? Like, there's so many excuses not to make your movie. And I've suffered from that a lot. Um, and it wasn't until 2015 where my roommate at the time, um, he and I were just tired of waiting around, tired of asking for um, asking for all of these things we had made excuses for and said, well, what do we have available to us? Um, and how can we tell a story with just our, our girlfriends at the time, now our wives, <laughs> <laughs> um, with like just us and we'll be in it if we have to be and someone else can operate the camera and we'll like switch off. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I was as a writer trying to make like really lofty philosophical stuff and I'm like, man. Feature length films yeah, too, going let's for the just big make feature. A, Let's make a fun, campy sci-fi. Mm -hmm. um, like keep it under five minutes. Uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens was coming out around that time, and I was so excited for that. <laughs> that I'm like, I want to live in a in a sci-fi world for yeah. for just a few days. Um, and I, like the final straw, I asked one person to help make all the costumes because I I drew all these costumes, which I didn't think were going to be too complicated, but. Um, this costume designer was like, oh, well, you know, I don't really have the time, but if I do, I'm going to have to charge this much. And then I, that was my last straw. Um, I was like, screw it. Um, I'm just going to do this myself. You were on um, your last leg. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cut. And so, Come full circle now. <laughs> Yeah. Bad, bad dad I jokes are not making it into the No, I edit. love it. Please uh, keep it. We do it all the time as well. Like, is this the last leg? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was on the last well, leg. I'm like, screw this. First advice then for someone who's making their first short film. I'm in the process of shooting my short film, so this is actually great. And I'm going to learn a lot from you guys. Um, <laughs> It, 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 no, really, it's just a perfect opportunity because a lot of people might be in the same boat. So mm -hmm. there is, have you, like when you did your film, did you shoot, uh, did you shoot kind of like a rough draft, so to speak? Did you go through each scene? Did you, because you're talking about the pro thing, right? Which is, it's just a great point. And I think that a lot of people may suffer from that. And what do you suggest to just get started? Maybe pick a scene, like, cause that was my idea for mine was like, I know my main scene and I want that, I want to get that right. So I just basically started filming. It's a, you know, person's in a recliner and it's like, I just started planning that out, changing the backdrops, things like that, the framing. But what advice just to like get started and just shoot? Um, yeah, I'm a huge advocate for tests. Um, you know, you don't really have to be on the location, but uh, just seeing if what's in your mind's eye is matching what you see in the camera. Mm -hmm. And um, man, you can picture the biggest, coolest movie in the world, and then you see it through your monitor. And you're like, <laughs> oh, why does this suck? Yeah. Um, and that's what tests. That's what tests are for. Um, so, <laughs> I think that the solution, or a big solution to uh, not having a lot of money or not having someone who can execute that vision for you um, is spending time and preparation. Mm -hmm. um, so where where you might not have that money, uh, spend that in time um, doing tests. It can even be on your iPhone of just mm -hmm. what, what, what works, what helps. Um, I love to storyboard everything so that there's pretty much a locked edit before I even shoot. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like to work that way. That's totally interpretive. Um, but I like to storyboard and then I'll do tests to see like if that storyboard works. So I add that little step in between. Um, but yeah, I really advocate just going out and shooting stuff um, and not, I mean, if you do have access to the camera, you will be shooting your movie on. By all means, do that. You know, I know you talked about doing some lighting tests since you're going to have some low light uh, mm -hmm. right. scenes in your short film uh, coming up. And that's so key because sometimes yeah, like if if, if, I, if we've had a low light scene, I have a um, like this light bulb that does like flickering fire, so that we don't actually have to have fire. Right. Um, but certain LEDs, because of their power output, just put like this the striping um, through, yep. uh, depending on your frame rate. Mm -hmm. um, but like at 24 frames per second, it just looks 
awful. So yeah. I w if, if I didn't had run that test, um, certain light bulbs did it and certain ones didn't. And I was like, oh shoot, well, you know, if it's on someone's face, I, I need to uh, soften it or something so that we're not seeing all those stripes. Um, but when you don't do that planning, then you hit that problem mm -hmm. on the day of shooting. And uh, nobody likes that. There, there are enough things that go wrong serendipitously on a film set that like, if you can try and circumvent as many of them as possible ahead of time and just take your time and yeah. plan as much as you can so you can go into your shoot confident, um, anything that comes your way that is out of your control, you're gonna be able to hit that. So you're gonna be able to address that so much more calmly and confidently. Yeah, that's a great, uh, that's great advice. And now tie in your DIY, so props to that. So you, let's sure. say you're shooting, and maybe you could pick a film that you've done or a scene that you've you know, had struggles with. So you set your camera up, let's say you have the camera you're using, you set it up, you have this scene, and now you need props because it's really easy to be like, Oh yeah, you got a lot of stuff around your house, which normally, yeah, you sure. do have a lot of things you can mm -hmm. use around your house. But let's say you don't have those things around your house. Where should people go to look for these types of props that are either free or really cheap? Yeah, uh, I mean, we love the dollar store. Um, we love Amazon. Um, <laughs> Goodwill it, is our best friend. Oh we yeah, love the so many stores. things from Goodwill. Um, hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. I think uh, it, t it takes a lot of work to look at something and imagine it as something else. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it took me a little while to get there too. But um, I, I have a prop here that I just want to show as an example from that one uh, sci-fi short that I'm talking about. And this is like a, a sci-fi helmet that kind of looks like an Iron Man Mark I kind of thing. And okay. um, nobody had to wear it in the movie. Uh, mm -hmm. A character was just like polishing it. Um, but this was the bottom of my trash can um, that I just sawed off. And then this is all a uh, floor mat foam that you might put like in the garage, um, which if you heat it up can take some really cool shapes. And it just got hot glued and I painted it. Um, and mm -hmm. it looks kind of like a sci-fi helmet. So I, I knew that I couldn't make a circle that perfect. Um, right. So I just started looking around and um, yeah, dollar store, uh, looking at like toy guns or something I, I could chop them up and add little things to it um, so again that's time that's being invested but if money is an issue uh, you have to buy your quality with time uh -huh. um, and you have to allow yourself that time right uh, if you don't want to spend that money so I thought that this looked really good on screen and like mm -hmm. Uh, as the characters polish polishing it we just added the sound of like metal being polished and then I forget that it's like the inside of my old trash can. Um, so I think it, it, uh, it, depending on your story, obviously, um, there are some things that really are better if you just buy the real thing. Um, but for something like sci-fi or, I don't know, more, more fringe genres, um, you can be so creative with what you can make and you can do it for very cheap. Right. I learned pretty much everything about making props from YouTube for that short film um and the cosplay community um we're not necessarily cosplayers uh like we don't we haven't really gone to conventions before but um that community of makers is so proficient at making things for cheap and making it look like movie accurate and movie uh movie quality and then um, it's also such a friendly and giving community too, yeah. where they're excited to share their little tidbits and things that they've learned along the way. So even just like skimming through some of their videos, you might stop and be like, what are they using? Like, what are you using the back of that pencil for? And you're like, oh my God, that is totally something else I never would have imagined. So sometimes scouring YouTube is such a, a, a gift. And yeah, especially in the cosplay community. And then I was gonna jump to the side a little bit and say, first of all, safety is key, but even we've gone like, driving down our street on trash mm -hmm. night and if you need a couple <laughs> chairs for the scene and yeah. someone's throwing out their dining room set of chairs I mean safety first like make sure and especially now with COVID too make right. sure everything's clean and sanitary and don't put yourself in danger or anything but like 
or like Facebook Marketplace or mm -hmm. any of these places where people are just looking to like kind of get it off their hands um, is also a really cool resource to be like, okay, well, they are just moving and trying to get rid of some old junk in their garage. And I could totally reimagine that to a right. time machine or like something, yeah. whatever your, your short calls for. So that's a kind yeah. of a cool uh, resource as well. Yeah, that's yeah, a good- mentioning, oh, go for it. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Uh, her mentioning the uh, time machine. Um, if uh, <laughs> was... I, I have a couple pictures, I'll uh, I'll send you. Um, okay. Felt like throwing them up, but uh, it was a very 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 cheap project, and I basically negotiated with the director, like, all right, if if you can't pay me to make the, uh, he was only going to pay me for the supplies. Mm -hmm. I said, well, can I at least keep the time machine when I'm done with it? And this was for like a time travel short film. Uh huh. Um, and. So for, I think like just about 200 bucks, uh, I got a, a bunch of like basic supplies from Home Depot, like the plywood, hinges, screws, made a shell. But then that shell was covered. Uh, I went to my mechanic who uh, has a lot of junk <laughs> in his shop. And I said, hey, is there, do you have a pile of junk you're just looking to get rid of? And he's mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, please like go into this room and get anything you want. And I got oh, there you go. cords and cables and boxes and things that were so dirty and so nasty. <laughs> and I just like drilled them all to the inside of this, just a wooden coffin really, like that's all it was. Um, and it looks so dense. Uh, none of it has any logic <laughs> um, <laughs> at all. But, it's not a working time machine, unfortunately. Um, but I don't know, for some reason, our street like, kept getting rid of like giant TVs. So mm -hmm. uh, I'd bring those into the house, take them apart. And like the projecting thing that's in <laughs> old TVs was really cool. So I just stripped a bunch of those um, and just drilled them all into the inside of this time machine, which um, yeah, if it wasn't for having to buy and cut the lumber, uh, would have been totally free. So mm -hmm. right. that it takes time to hunt down stuff. But, uh, yeah, if you just look on your street, uh, mm -hmm. Facebook marketplace, Craigslist, like sometimes people are just giving stuff away for mm -hmm. free. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I thought of you guys just this past weekend because I was looking for some props and I was going through Craigslist and Facebook marketplace and stuff like that. Great. And, um, I ran across an old 60s uh, cabinet TV. Nice. And it, lo and it looked perfectly in good condition in the front. The back was all messed up. But I was mm -hmm. like, oh, that, that would be amazing prop. To ha and it was free. So I, yeah. I messaged the person, but I never heard back because I still oh. love that TV. Like, oh, know, man. So, um, so we'll see. Maybe they gave it away or got rid of it already. But... Yeah, that's a great point. And Facebook, yeah. you know, a lot of communities have communities, the community where we live in. People are always mm -hmm. kind of posting stuff for sale or getting rid of chairs like you talked about. So that's great advice. Yeah. So we talked about yeah. getting started. The pro, uh, you know, just get out and shoot, planning, scripting, mm -hmm. uh, how to create things if you have the time to save money. But I also think that that's really good even if you do have the money because oh, yeah. filmmaking Absolutely. is creative and you could go buy something and pretty much that process is you're going to buy it and you're going to set it down and you're going to set up your camera and you're going to be like all right lighting let's shoot where when you're mm -hmm. making things and you're scouring things that creative your creative juices are going and you may mm -hmm. go to our sponsor uh Goodwill. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I wish, man. I, I wish, yeah. And, Goodwill, and if Goodwill, you're listening. You can send out uh, a check oh, tomorrow. Um, but you oh, may run gosh. across some things that you weren't planning on getting or looking yeah. for. Yeah. And you'd be like, yeah. wait a minute, you know, this, oh, that would be great. And that's the creative process. It is mm -hmm. always spending the time with it. And I think that you guys have brought a lot of advice. So, you know, we are um, doing this as a, a live premiere. So if you guys have questions for Julian or Kristen while this video is playing, definitely, you know, <laughs> post your questions and in the chat and they will try to answer them as best as possible. Did you guys have help and inspiration and friends or anybody like when you got started that really helped you? 
I mean, everyone. <laughs> I think yeah. that's what we can kind of credit it to. Yeah. Uh, and not, it wasn't even like a financial thing, but uh, whether it was friends of ours um, that were like willing to lend a hand, like be like believed in the project, whether it's like, oh, this sounds like a lot of fun and I'm not doing anything on this Saturday when you guys are filming, like, sure, I'll come hold a boom pole for a couple hours or I'll come like put on a costume and stand in the background. Like our friends were very supportive yeah. um, in that sense. Um, but then, yes, yeah, some, yeah, some of them have been actors in, in the shorts um, or just coming to, uh, a couple of them went to film festivals, like so coming to festivals with us and supporting us in different ways, um, but has had so much of a hand in every short that we've made. And, uh, I, and I remember now so. we talked about this and this is very important. So people pay attention to this very closely. OK, because Kristen uh -oh. brought up a very good point. If you are getting free help, what do you yes. do? OK. <laughs> so we've been on, Julian and I both also have a performance background, so we've been in a lot of friends projects and also a lot of professional projects here, and we live in Los Angeles too. I've been on high level productions, I've been on friends productions. Sometimes you work for free, sometimes you get paid, but if you don't take care of the people, whether they're working on crew or cast, yeah. doesn't matter, you have to make sure that they have water, coffee, a comfortable place to relax and sit down when they need to. It sounds so silly and so... Food. obvious but yeah. as long as they can eat drink and be comfortable in between sets especially i mean if they're getting paid they still need those necessities too but especially if they're doing things for free oh, for yeah. you uh, the least you can do is make their time comfortable and fun because uh, sets can be stressful sets are really long days things come up but as there's nothing worse than being out in the woods for 12 hours not knowing right when the next meal or even drink of water or like a chair is going to be available yeah. so and you know what like i've made those mistakes and that's yeah. why that's why i'm so passionate about that <laughs> and why we're like now since get since uh, getting married and like making a lot of these projects together like that's one of the first conversations is like okay what can we make if we're on mm -hmm. location like what food can we bring um and, and it doesn't need to be a total catered meal either no. again we're very, very like DIY and like this doesn't uh -huh. need to be a full yeah come in with buffet tables of a fancy hors d'oeuvres and, right. and yeah. such but the basics the basic and, like, human like, needs like, yeah <laughs> um a lot of times yeah to save money too we'll make big trays of like pasta salad or things that can like be kept cold or like lukewarm for like most of the day um just trying to think ahead and make sure people's comforts in mind and also just checking in on your, your cast yeah. and crew too. Like, I know it's busy. I know it, there's hardly any time to think of anything. Um, but literally, if you see someone that's kind of zoning out or maybe starting to feel a little dizzy, make sure they have what they need. Cause like the last thing you yeah. want is for people to start dropping like flies. <laughs> or even honestly, if they just yeah. have a terrible time too, no yeah. one's gonna want to work with you again. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. it's such a community. And we've gotten the opportunity to work with so many people that we now love to work with. And it's because of those good relationships and because of that established um, respect for each other on sets too. I think respect is the opportune word there. Just mm -hmm. always, always have, I know, always be respectful of people's time, mm -hmm. people's energy, of people's presence, um, mm -hmm. of their needs. Um, thank always... them at the end of the day, whether they did the best job in the world or a mediocre job, yeah. make sure you thank them for their time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the basic human needs is something that will make everyone's day so much better. And then like, if people are having fun, your your day's gonna be more fun. The shoot's gonna go better. You're gonna get better footage if everyone's comfortable and having a good time. So Absolutely. that's a huge, huge lesson learned yeah. on our end. Well, I have so. the most respect, uh, the utmost respect for you guys and your energy level because making the amount of props and you know, time <laughs> machines and, uh the stuff that you guys do um so reuse the same props in different short films yeah, too sure, like you don't sure. have to start from scratch every time yeah. obviously well, and they're the props prop. too yeah they're props yeah. so they're not the focus of every scene they're in the background and people don't notice these things and mm -hmm. that's why yeah. they're subconscious and then things don't need to be perfect because sometimes they're out of focus too they're not even in focus yeah. but they need to be <laughs> oh, yeah. there for the shot but they don't need to be perfect um well, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I've learned a, a ton. I'm inspired to go plan my shot and uh, do my, cool. um, you know, short film. Um, 
but uh, you know, for me, it's the time. You know, obviously, I'm running Gear Focus and you know, doing our videos and you know, creator interviews mm -hmm. like this. Which you know, thank you guys so much for for being on and sharing mm, tips and advice. And again, we're gonna have the sh uh, the videos that you prepared. May I put those together? post those, we'll link those in the description below so that people want to see more detail of the behind the scenes. I know we're going to throw up some shots throughout this video, but um, yeah, some really good advice. Keep up the amazing work, really guys. Uh, that film was, it. you hit it on the head. We said it had to be positive based on what we were going through. And mm -hmm. you, the key word, and I use this word daily, is levity add levity to mm -hmm. a situation mm -hmm. so i think people take themselves way too seriously a, a lot of the time i do we're all mm -hmm. at, probably at fault of that because we're we're like this and uh we're in the mode um but it's so important to have that with yourself as a filmmaker as well too mm -hmm. don't be so hard on yourself you know you mm -hmm. fail and remember you, you learn more from your failures um yeah. mm -hmm. so any last bit of advice for people getting into filmmaking, DIY, anything that you'd like to add? I'm, I'm just going to quickly say, yeah. just have, movie making should be fun. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're having fun. If you aren't having a good time while you're doing it, you're doing something wrong. Right. So make sure, and then the whole process too, whether it's the concept phase and you're coming up and make a movie about something you find enjoyable or that you're not seeing somewhere else. Um, have fun at either making the props and costumes yourself or have fun communicating with someone who is uh, more of a specialty maker in those things. Right. Um, enjoy the time, enjoy the time on set, enjoy the post-production. And then when the movie comes out, you have a product that you love and it could be short little films, uh, short content like we make, um, or it could be your feature film, but keep making, keep enjoying it. And the lessons learned just build and build and gets more fun along the way. So enjoy the process and that's all I gotta say. Awesome. <laughs> uh, riffing off something that she said, um, uh, something I always try to, to stress to people who are asking, um, well, like, how do I start? Mm -hmm. um, is this idea of connecting your passions. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have a, a passion for movies. You want to make movies. Um, you might have a camera, you might have some props, you might have a couple friends willing to be in it. Ah, but then how do I, like, what, what story? Um, and, I, and I'm a huge proponent, I'm a huge advocate of finding the other things in your life that you are passionate about, whether that's cooking or animals dance. or dance or anything like that, and let your passions mix because that's going to make your movie storytelling so much better. Mm -hmm. um, being so pro-centric uh, um, really makes you focus on technologies that will come and go. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm sure that a lot of the cameras we're, we're talking about this year are going to be like 50 bucks at 7-Eleven in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. But what, what will never be cheap and what will never be a commodity is your voice. So if you put energy into finding your voice as a creative person and connect those passions that you have, then, then your voice will be valuable. Like people will want to work with you because you have something original to mm -hmm. bring. Anyone can buy the best camera, and it doesn't take too long to learn how to operate it. Right. Um, I mean, I, I'm a camera operator, so I'm not dissing camera operators. <laughs> um, but you know, it's a it's an interchangeable skill. But what isn't interchangeable is you and what you have to say. And I think that once I started making passion centric films rather than pro centric films. Mm. <laughs> they just got better, even though they didn't look as sharp or something like that. Like the technology will come around. And right. personally, I like to tie my, um, this isn't advice. This is just how I do it. I, I tie my gear growth with my storytelling growth. So I don't let myself get the biggest and the best until I really need that. And I right. completely max out the, the uses that I have mm -hmm. for the gear that I have. Um, and, if there is a real creative need to invest in some other lens or some other camera, then I will get it. But like, I, I, tr I really try to let the, mm -hmm. those two sides of my growth happen simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, because then once I do get my hands on something that's really cool and really high tech, 
yep. um, creatively, I'll know how to use that better than someone who picked that up without the practice. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so just having that time to practice on your own time and your own dime makes you so much ready for when you're on someone, when you're on somebody else's time yeah. and on their dime, hopefully. <laughs> A motto that I've kind of learned to live by is uh, stop worrying about being the best. Do your best every time and someday it might be the best. Um, and that's that's a motto that I try to remind myself of, especially when watching like the Academy Awards or something like that. I'm like, oh, mm. when am I gonna do that? <laughs> but if you do your best every day, someday mm. people are gonna consider it the best. Um, so that's that's something we try to live by in the house of like, well, this doesn't look like what everyone in Hollywood's making, but it's the best that we can do. Mm -hmm. And that's all we have to do. So yeah. as long as you're, you're putting that out there, um, someday someone's gonna notice. And that, you know, it's, it's also okay to be curious about filmmaking and that you don't, mm -hmm. you don't have to kill it the first time around. Right. Um, you don't, you don't have to be movie theater ready the first time around. And no one is. Yeah. No, not any single director, I don't think, in history. Like, Steven Spielberg did not become him right. over his first yeah. time he picked up a camera. Like, right. it takes work and... Um, and it's okay to dabble. Yeah. yeah. And experiment. You figure yeah. it out along the way. Oh, I was gonna say, like Julian was saying, like kind of grow with your your um with your gear as well too. I was like, that is such a good plot point for gear focus. It's like, okay, well, start with the basics, yeah. get yourself basic tripod, basic all this yeah. stuff, basic camera lenses, and then when you grow out of those, throw them up on gear focus. There you go. <laughs> Upgrade your stuff to new stuff, and then grow with it. I was like, that's such a good thing for you guys to be like, <laughs> yeah. Because you don't want to start off with this heavy machinery that you're not used to working with. Work with the basics and keep switching it out through like a website like yours yeah. and be like, okay, mm -hmm. well, I can grow with it and change things as I advance. Yeah. Hopefully people, I, you know, if I watch this, uh, you know, and listen to you guys, I've learned a lot. So hopefully everybody else has as well. And thank you guys so much for for being with us today. And congrats on winning again. It really was an amazing short film. Thank you. Everybody thank you. loved it. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for being on the uh, creator interviews at Gear Focus. Thank you awesome. for having us. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll see you again soon. Sounds good. <laughs> hey, hey, hey.